I was going to ask you, what are, the, what are the markers you're looking for in terms of response? And if I hear you correctly, it's not necessarily the diarrhea. It's the, if you will, it's not necessarily epiphenomenon because they're direct, but it's other things other than the diarrhea. It, it's the whole patient. You're looking at the, the entire clinical picture. But the patient's sitting there losing volume, right? Uh, uh, sick and you're giving vancomycin and the diarrhea is not going away, isn't the temptation to do something else? I, I mean, it is tempting. And, and, and actually, people are scared to give antidiarrheals in the setting of C. diff, but if they're on effective doses of vancomycin and everything else is getting better, I give, I give uh, uh, antidiarrheals. I, I, I don't hesitate. Do you guys buy into that? I was always taught never do that because you don't stop the transudation of fluid, the gut gets bigger, maybe you're gonna even predispose to more gut. I, th I, think, I think this remains controversial. Uh, while there isn't good evidence that anti-motility drugs will make the city f much worse, we have a rule in infectious disease that you don't treat infectious diarrhea with anti-motility drugs. There have I'm been- glad somebody else have, heard that. There have been cases. I, I, I must say that um, many of the patients who are diagnosed with CDF nowadays don't really have uh, C. diff, and that's because they are diagnosed with tests that are oversensitive and do not differentiate between colonization and, and infection, and, and so our um, um, experience is somewhat uh, uh, mixed in this, in this regard. But I want to say in terms of therapy, clinical trials that are very stringent in their uh, definition of who responds and who not, and very often you think the patient is doing better by the criteria the patient failed therapy, show that vancomycin is effective in 90% of patients. And, and if you take our experience, I would, I would think that it's probably effective in more than 90% of patients in, 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 but one of the problems that we still have with CDF, uh, apropos therapy, is with those patients who appear very, very sick and who remain very, very sick despite of therapy. And this is a challenging group. May not be a problematic group in the community because those patients end up in the ICU most, most commonly, but this is still a group that we struggle with. And a lot of what we do in this group uh, is, is, is not completely evidence-based. And what are you looking for? You're looking for white count, fever, toxicity. Uh, clearly, diarrhea matters, right, in terms of if only fluid balance. Yeah, I mean, again, most the patient that I was talking about, it's, it's those patients where everything is getting better, but they have, sometimes it's persistent diarrhea, sometimes it's persistent abdominal pain, sometimes it's both, but everything else is getting better. They're not having such severe diarrhea where they, you know, are losing fluid, where they still need IV fluids. So that, that, that's a different subset of patients. Those are those patients that have the, the, very, the most severe colitis. Those are the ones with toxic megacolon, um, or sometimes you need to proceed with surgery if, if they're that sick. From well, we'll, we'll come to surgery and fecal transplant later, but the, the, um, the, the point about the diarrhea is that I think it's a very valuable thing to look at. I think you can expect an improvement in somewhere between three and five days. Certain people take a little longer to respond. Uh, the older patient, uh, the patient with renal disease, take longer to respond. But sometimes in a patient who is cured, the diarrhea never resolves. And these patients have probably a post-infection irritable bowel syndrome okay. that can occur in uh, 20 to 25% uh, of patients. Well, wait, 20 to 25%, that's huge. It's huge. About a quarter of the people that you're gonna treat will get better technically from their C. diff, but they'll have persistent diarrhea. They're That's not going to be very happy about this. And they're not very happy about that. That's correct. So how long do you treat uh, all comers, C. diff, before you say, okay, we're done? If, in fact, you're not getting any diarrheal response. So you were asking me about a patient no, yeah. who came in, uh, diagnosed C. diff, yep. I treated them, and the diarrhea didn't get better? Well, no, I'm, not, I'm asking every. Look, let, let me be more clear, perhaps. Here's somebody with C. diff. We've established the right. diagnosis. You start one of your drugs, metronidazole, vancomycin. You're gonna to treat to some endpoint. And if diarrhea isn't necessarily the endpoint, and it won't be in a quarter of your patients, what is your endpoint? It's not my endpoint, not in a full quarter of patients, because in many of those patients, there is a dramatic improvement in the diarrhea. Okay. But they never return to normal, okay? So it's not that the diarrhea doesn't respond, it does respond. They're not as sick as they were. 
and uh, but the, they're still not having normal bowel movements, and that's important. You have to establish a baseline for these patients that is different than the baseline before their infection. What's a typical length of treatment in terms of time you're on antibiotics? Studies uh, usually use 10 days, but it's well known that if you're treating with metronidazole, that you frequently have to extend to 14, even 21 days of treatment. We did a trial in which we were limiting people to 14 days of treatment, and we were losing patients in our trial because uh, everyone was treating them longer than 14 days with metronidazole. Uh, again, that's one of the issues with metronidazole. It seems to be slower acting than vancomycin as well, but generally 10 to 14 days uh, is uh, yeah. plenty okay. of treatment. So you've treated somebody. The, the diarrhea has banked down, for lack of a better word. White counts better, fever's better, uh, electrolytes are okay. For all intents and purposes, they're better. You've stopped your antibiotic therapy. Now how do you follow them up? What is your typical callback period? How often do you see them? What do you do? Well, you've got to warn them that the recurrence rate with C. diff is going to be around 25%. In other words, they're going to get their diarrhea back again in about a quarter of patients, and they have to be prepared for that. Uh, and so you, you tell them, you know, call me if, if your diarrhea comes back and we'll get you in and evaluate you. you know, because this disease just sounds worse and I know. worse and worse. <laughs> because here's about 25% who never get back to baseline. They have some diarrhea following their acute attack. Then there's, I'm guessing, another, although there's probably some overlap, Part of another them will 25%. Be the same 25 but right, <laughs> but let's somewhere between 50 and, and 25% are never gonna, well not never, but are gonna have more symptoms as you go along. So what, what kind of follow-up do you do typically? I mean, that's uh, basically you just have to inform patients of the, of the possibility that this is going to happen uh, and also caution them about taking any more antibiotics if you can absolutely avoid right. them. A lot of my patients come in and say that, you know, I, don't give me antibiotics because my doctor said I had C. diff, I shouldn't have any. That's can correct. I ask, uh, Eric